number six minutes fast, so don't pay attention to that. Uh, <laughs> my name is Susan Byers. I'm the Executive Director of the Career Development Center. Thank you all for coming today to learn a little bit more about internships. And first I want to start by introducing our panelists. Uh, coming to us live from Indianapolis <laughs> is Caitlin Crowley. Caitlin is uh, soon to be a graduate. Uh, you're done in December, right, Caitlin? Or is it May? Oh, I in May. Oh, there, okay. So, and, and she is a mechanical uh, engineering student. Then here with us in Helmke, we have John Weiss. John is a very recent graduate, 2021, uh, in information technology, and he's working at Ash Brokerage. And we have Matthias Haydock, who's a 2018 graduate uh, in accounting and finance, and he's working at Lincoln Financial. So, we're going to get started with some questions, and then as you guys have questions, please um, feel free to raise your hand. If you're on Zoom, put your question in chat, and Melody uh, will throw that out there for you. So let's start uh, with the question of what caused you, when you were a student, uh, what caused you to seek out an internship? Why did you go looking for one? Who wants to answer first? This one, Mom, and there you go. So, uh, John Weiss, and I, I saw that an internship because I was going into information security, and here on campus at the time, we didn't have an information security like program, so I was sort of cobbling everything together, and I figured seeking out an information security internship would be a great way in trying to seek stuff in the future to put something on my resume and sort of round off the fact that my degree wouldn't say information security. Okay. Okay. Um, for me, uh, studying in the business school, I think it's kind of um, common practice to pursue internships um, and very well promoted in the business school and so coming in as a freshman it was just kind of my expectation that the path into career out of school would start with an internship um, and so whatever there were opportunities on campus to go and connect with um, employers and things like that I would try to make it a priority to be there and just uh, get connected with people Caitlin, how about you? Yes, as a returning student, my first intention going back to school was to graduate as a medical device development engineer. So from some of the first meetings with my advisor, I was asking, when can I begin an internship? When can I start co-op? And to meet that goal of graduating as a design medical devices to help improve people's lives with replacing uh, knees and shoulders. And so the internship is really what motivated me to go back to school even. All right, great, thanks. Uh, so the next question is, and you guys touched on this a little bit, but how did you go about looking for an internship? A couple of you mentioned maybe talking to an advisor or, or things like that, but how did you go about finding your internship? So when I first was going to look for an internship, I actually talked to my advisor for a time that I was interested in. She brought the internship to me when it came out. She basically recommended me to them, and you know, that's all I um, my first internship, um, a friend of mine's dad connected me with uh, a small company in Fort Wayne and I went and just to, I just had a list of questions and sat down with one of the partners and um, just trying to get an understanding for, I don't even know what, I didn't know, but it was not much. Um, and in that meeting with him, he mentioned that they were looking to fill an internship role in the next year. And so that connection actually turned into my first internship. Um, so along with events on campus, um, in my personal experience, just networking and having connections with people, because um, employers are looking for interns too. So I think that a lot of times opportunities can come up 
How about you, Caitlin? My first internship was a co-op and I was placed through the PFW Cooperative Education Office. I gave them a resume and they provided that resume to several local employers that would be a good fit. And I interviewed with them and was placed in that co-op through the school. Oh, uh, the internship you did with Procter & Gamble, how did you end up with that one? With that one, because of COVID, my final co-op was canceled and I sought out a new internship. And the main tool I used was Handshake. I've, I'm very happy with Handshake. There are many listings specifically for internships and co-ops. I submitted an application to the company through Handshake, interviewed, went through the process, and um, had, was very successful with that. And, and I think you said once, Caitlin, that um, they actually reached out to you through Handshake? Like, they must have seen your profile and reached out to you to see if you were interested. Is that true? Yes, and that's something that happens fairly regularly on Handshake. I keep my profile up to date and I receive um, outreach from mechanical engineering companies in Indiana and nationally with internship and full-time opportunities through Handshake. That's great. So for any of you who are thinking about, you know, looking for uh, internships or co-op positions, um, you've got several ideas here. Networking is important. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, I would create a LinkedIn profile uh, and be putting, you can even put a, a message out on your LinkedIn profile that says you're currently looking for an internship and get your name out there. Use any connections you might have through family, friends, neighbors. Um, talk to your faculty, talk to your advisors, use Handshake. Uh, come to our internship fair we're going to be having in a couple of weeks. So there's lots of different ways you just need to start looking and connecting with people and letting people know that you're, you're looking for those types of opportunities. All right, um, why don't we do this real quickly. Uh, we're talking about internships in general, but why don't each of you tell us kind of like, I know some of you had multiple internships, but where did you do your internship and what kind of things did they have you doing? So I worked three internships when I was in school. Um, one of them was a, a summer, it was more of a, like a study abroad program, um, but there was an internship component to that as well. Um, and I, my experience from that has been more of just like a cultural immersion rather than learning technical skills. Um, but my first internship was with a really small local company and uh, my last internship led to my full-time job outside of school and did you ask like what we learned yeah like what, what was your role what did they have you doing okay so uh, in my third internship I was an audit intern um, so I was essentially doing kind of just a watered down um, amount of work that I ended up doing in my full-time job outside of school, um, just to kind of, from both perspectives, the company to get a look at us interns and see if we would be a good fit for the company and then a chance for us to learn what it, the audit field was like and uh, what kind of work it took. Um, and I think, maybe we'll get to this later, but the thing that I learned most in my internships was really just computer skills and. Microsoft Excel um, in my field that's a big tool that we use and I didn't really outside of the couple classes that you take I didn't really spend much time learning technical skills like that so that I think was the most helpful experience for my internships really besides landing a full-time job. So to bounce off a little bit of what he was saying uh, learning the culture shock difference between being like a student daily and moving on to working in the office every day. You know, that was a very important thing that I took away from my internship is just learning how to 
interact with people on a professional level and interact with people on a full time. Because sometimes, you know, when you see like a, a student for one class twice a week, you know, you get along with having to deal with the same people eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, it can be a little bit different. And so learning how to, in a safe environment, um, work with people that you have differences with. That was something that I learned pretty well in the internship. Um, for my daily stuff, again, it's just like a watered down version of what I do now, where I was responding to things like phishing emails and making sure that we didn't have compromised accounts and what to do with those kind of things. I was doing a lot of things, and the difference now is I do those things and also get to make decisions on how those things are done. So. Thank you. Caitlin, how about you? I completed two co-ops with Zimmer Biomet. They are a medical device manufacturer and an internship in a co-op with Procter & Gamble in the Gillette division. Uh, starting out with my first co-op, Zimmer Biomet, I wrote and reviewed technical specifications on medical devices, looking at uh, what forces they need to withstand, reviewing the regulations and make sure that those are in the documentation for the device. In my second co-op with Zimmer Biomet, I was on the verification team and that focused more on testing and ensuring that the devices would meet those specifications. Moving into Procter & Gamble, I was on the new product development team, so that got into more of the design and conceptualization of the products. And there I worked on from the uh, beginning innovation to preparing to hand the product off to manufacturing. All right, thank you. So I know sometimes students are worried that they don't, um, they feel like they don't have enough experience or they don't know enough yet to have an internship. What would you say to a student who's concerned about that? So that's kind of the point of an internship. Like you're here for a reason because you, you're doing what you want to do right now because it's what you want to do. You're learning. Internships are a place where you learn. You're in a safer environment than you would be in like a professional bank. And everybody knows you're there to continue learning. So no, you probably don't know enough to do the job professionally all the time, but just being there at the internship itself shows that you do actually have the knowledge you need to be the intern. What you feel is normal, and that's okay. But also, everybody knows why you're there. Yeah, I, I would agree with all of that. Um, in my experience, I didn't know really anything going into any of my internships about what to do. And I think it's always intimidating and um, a little bit discouraging maybe in that like I feel like I need to present myself as knowing how to do this so I can get a job offer because that's ultimately why I'm here. Um, but being on the other side, and having worked with interns, like the, there's not an expectation, in most cases, I'm, I'm sure that every company is different, but um, there's not an expectation for you to come in to your first work experience and know everything or even figure it out right away. Um, I think the key that a lot of employers are looking for is, are you willing to learn? Do you ask questions? Do you want to learn? Um, and are you excited about being here and um, what you're doing? And, um, so I think those are, in my experience, um, the big key. And I know it's difficult to show up at a place where it seems like everyone else knows what's going on and you're the one who just has no clue. Um, but that's expected and um, you only get experience by doing it for a long time. So everyone starts that. Caitlin, do you have anything you'd like to add? I agree with all of those statements and the internship is a time to learn and thinking ahead to after graduation, most roles would expect a year of training to really get the employee up to speed. So the internship can cut down on that and prepare you to move more quickly into your role. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it is kind of, if you have several years of internship experience that that really uh, helps you ad advance. And that, so that, that brings up my next question then. How do you think having the internship really helped jumpstart your career? How did that help you advance as far as that goes? So for me, in my experience, um, my internship led to my first full-time job. Um, so that was a pretty helpful tool in jumpstarting my career. Um, also, the, I started with full-time with, I think, five others in the class, and half of us had interned and half didn't. And it was so clear um, who had interned there before and who hadn't, because it just I just felt coming into my first full-time job so much more comfortable and prepared for it. And not necessarily that I was or that I knew so much more, I just approached it with um, a lot more confidence. And for me, that was key. And, really feeling comfortable and excited about my first full-time role. So like I said, uh, immigration security can be kind of a difficult field to break into, and I absolutely think my internship jump-started my career. I actually started here on campus as a student worker in the information security department, but that internship taught me a lot about networking with other information security professionals and also, you know, taught me a lot about the day-to-day. I would absolutely do it again. Caitlin, anything to add? Yes, uh, thinking about jumpstarting my career even before graduating, the internships and co-ops helped me by making me very confident in the roles that I can fulfill and as let me focus on specific roles that I would want to pursue. And that has very much helped me jumpstart my career moving forward. I think also too, uh, tell me if this is, applies to any of you, but I know at some companies, uh, when students work there as an intern and then maybe move into a full-time role, uh, it impacts some of your benefits too. So like sometimes for retirement or, um, uh, some of the other benefits you have to have worked as an employee there for so many years before you're like vested in retirement or some of the other options and a lot of companies will count the time that you spent as an intern towards that so that's another you know just a small benefit that it can help with as well yeah and um, I would just add to that too another benefit of working internships it can be from your perspective so say you're not exactly sure on what you want to do with your career um, or you're torn between a couple different things like internships can be really good ways for you to try out do I actually like this and want to do this or do I need to change focus uh, and without having to commit to a, accepting a full-time offer and then realizing that you're in the wrong spot Yes, that's a really good point. That's one of the, a very big benefit of doing an internship is just that chance to get out there and try the role and see how you how you feel about it. Um, what would you say were some of the most important lessons you learned or skill sets you developed from your internship? So, like I said, the the social aspect really, because I came into it with quite a bit of technical knowledge compared to maybe other people who came in on. The technical side of it wasn't really that much of a struggle for me, other than the day to day operations and learning what I heard the most, but it was dealing with, like I said, uh, networking and socializing. Like that is one of the main things, because my department deals with basically every department that has a computer. And usually when people hear from me, they're not having a great day. And so having to learn how to work with those kinds of people when they're panicking, when they're angry, when they're upset, it really taught me early on in the safe environment how to be like, it's all right, we're going to sort it out. You messed up, and that's okay, because we'll get it sorted. Just don't do it again, you know? And that kind of confidence, I cannot imagine what it would be like to try and come into a role without that kind of experience with experienced people. I mentioned already um, just technical skills in, in Microsoft Excel, um, but I think the biggest thing I learned was professionalism and just how to, um, interact with people in an office environment and clients too. I 
got to have a little bit of client interaction in my internships. So I think that was a, a big um, boost jumping into my career, having had experience a little bit um, in a professional setting like that. Caitlin, how about you? Hey, Susan, my headphones cut out. Can you confirm you can still hear me? Okay, thank you. I think the biggest thing that I learned is definitely, regardless of other team members' experience, you'll always be working with a large team. Some people might have 10 years experience, five years experience, and more experience than you do as an internship and after you start your career. But even as someone with three months experience, there will be a point when you are the expert in the room. Once you have ownership of a project, you will be the expert on that project. And there is information you can share to grow your supervisor's understanding of that. And I think you need to be ready for that. That's something that I wasn't expected and it's something that gave me more pride in the work that I was doing, even as, as an intern, being an expert on my area. That's, that's a great point, Caitlin. And that actually uh, brings me to my next question, which was, um, what was the biggest adjustment you dealt with as you started your internship? So you mentioned, Caitlin, the fact that you had to realize that you actually could be the expert on a, on a topic or a project you were working on. Um, was there anything else that um, you really had to adjust or get used to as an intern? There were some adjustments going from a student to uh, working in an office. As a student, your professor might ask for a report and they expect five pages of summary and to, while the in the office, there might be a preference for a much more brief format. People may want a paragraph summary and be able to have a full understanding of the project from one page. And I think that was really uh, the big one of the big adjustments going from a student to in the office is the presentation of information. Yeah, that's a good point. What you guys anything to add on that honestly for me the biggest adjustment was the schedule um in school i always had afternoon and evening classes and then i would study late in the evening and then working internships um they started in the morning so i don't know to wake up in the morning and a lot of times i still feel like i'm planning how to do that so, <laughs> uh, silly thing but honestly it was a big adjustment so it was a, a lot of the preference of presentation of data for me because you can have the, the scholarly technical requirement of how this data really should be presented in a perfect environment and then you have a manager who really doesn't like it that way and wants it somewhere you just want everything to have one, all spreadsheets and you're just like oh okay so i'm just gonna have to relearn all of this that was probably the biggest adjustment <laughs> so how did you find that the work you were doing in your internships related to what you were learning in classes. Did that help at all? For me, yes. Um, I, so I started my career as an auditor, um, and I, uh, let's see, I took an audit class, and then I worked an internship, and then I took the second audit class, and it was amazing how much clicked from what I study in the second audit class to what I see in my internship. So when I started full time, I felt like I was able to kind of, because a lot of, in my experience, a lot of coursework is like a high level of theory. Um, and then when you start working, you're in the details and it's hard to see how they connect. Um, and so for me, that was really helpful to kind of connect like the big picture of why we're doing what we're doing to like the actual details of this is how it's done. Um, I don't know if every internship's like that, but for, for me that was kind of exciting actually to go to class and learn things and think, oh, okay, like this is this makes sense and I'm actually gonna need to know this uh, to do my job. So for me it was kind of the flip side where something would happen at work and I'd be like, I wonder why that happened, and then I'd come back and talk to my professor and be like, so this thing happened at work. 
why did this happen? How could I have seen this coming? What could I have done to avoid this? And it really prompted um, a more in-depth conversation with my you know, people in my classes because I actually had thoughtful, professional questions to begin asking them that they could really begin to help me uh, attach and connect that academic learning with you know, the real environment. Caitlin, anything else you'd like to add? I don't have anything else to add to that one right now. Okay. Yeah, I, I know I've talked with several students before who maybe weren't the most motivated student even, but then when they got the internship, it really kind of opened their eyes to like how much they love working in that area and they could start to see the connection between classes and what they were doing and then it, it helped them to be a little bit more motivated as a student because it just made a little bit more sense. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about, we, we touched a little bit on this earlier, but going back to that idea of when you maybe start your internship and you feel like you don't know enough or you don't have all the answers, did you feel like you got really good support? Did they put a support mechanism in place for you? Did they give you good training? Were there people you could go to to ask questions? So I had the manager that was in charge of me, but then I had direct charges who were directly over me and I worked with them. And quite frankly, I mean, a couple of times, they would get upset with me because I wasn't asking them enough questions. I, I was kind of nervous about not knowing some of the answers to things and made myself look kind of dumb because I didn't, didn't know exactly how to do it. And so we set aside a schedule where we'd sit down, we'd sort of discuss how this week went amongst us and then you know, any questions that I had, any mistakes I thought I had made, and then they would, you know, adjust things that they had seen and sort of address them. So, yeah, and in my experience has been pretty similar. Um, I've worked with a group of interns, and so that was um, nice to be able to collaborate with other people who going through the same thing as me, um, and just kind of share tips and experiences and whatnot. Um, but also, uh, internships are a really good way for companies to bring on new people. And so you know, if they brought you in, and uh, a lot of internships will pay you to work for them. And um, so if they're investing that in you, then they also have an interest in developing you and you learning. And so I think for the most part, and definitely in my experience, uh, the employers that I've interned for have uh, made it a priority for me to learn um, and grow and understand more of what I'm doing because it's in my best interest but also in theirs. And that, I mean, that's a good point, Matthias. Um, while the internship is a chance for the student to try out the role or that, that field, that organization, um, it's also very the reason employers will do internships is they want to try out people. They want to try out you as a potential employee for the future. So um, you're right that they're going to invest a lot of time and training into you. And that's one reason why we encourage students um, to look for internships early on. A lot of times employers want to hire a student that they can have for a couple semesters, maybe even a couple years, depending on the setup. So we have a co-op program, which is alternating full-time work with full-time school. Um, but internships that are part-time are more common. And so a lot of times employers may have students work, say, full-time in the summer and then part-time during the fall and spring semester. Um, so every company sets it up a little bit differently, but there are some that may be willing to keep you around, like I said, for several semesters or several years. So a lot of times uh, if a student would wait until it's their last semester on campus and then they want to go look for an internship, an employer may or may not be that interested because they may want to have somebody that they can have around longer than that, uh, especially if they've got long-term projects they want you to work on or something like that. The other thing Matthias mentioned that I want to talk about just a minute is uh, whether internships are paid or not because most internships are paid. Um, there is a, a sort of a myth, I guess I say, that most internships are not paid. There are some unpaid internships. Um, mostly you will see that in not-for-profit uh, agencies, government agencies, things like that. Um, for the most part, though, most of the internships are paid. Uh, if you find one that's not paid and it's not with a, 
a nonprofit, if it's with a for-profit company, I would encourage you to maybe keep looking elsewhere because you can probably find one that is paid. And some of them will pay really well depending on what the industry is. Um, Caitlin, did you want to say anything about um, the support you received as an intern? Yes. yes. Uh, I have worked at larger companies that had internal training softwares. So I've been able to receive support through that and support myself. The systems would have training on the software and corporate procedures to build that knowledge base. So let me ask you all this question. Um, do you think having an internship is worth giving up uh, maybe you have a really high paying part-time job that's really you know getting some good income from it uh, is it worth giving that up in order to do an internship even if the internship maybe pays a little bit less what are your thoughts i think it really all depends on you and your situation if you are in the type of situation where you really have to ask personally if you have to ask that kind of question i can really reflect on whether or not you can afford to take that off and that's just a lot. It depends personally on you. Yeah, and a lot of internships um, would, even if you're working full-time hours, maybe it's like a temporary employee arrangement and you wouldn't get benefits or anything like that. So if you were relying on a job for insurance or things like that, I think that, that would be more difficult of a conversation to consider. Um, but if you, if you can, do it and um, you're at that point in your life where you can uh, meet your needs financially through an internship, getting up a different part-time job, I would definitely say it. I, I only worked internships in school and I did some tutoring, like off um, things like that to make a little bit of money, but I never had a part-time job like at a restaurant or anything like that in school other than internships and I was able to um, meet all of my needs that way so for me yeah it was it would have been like giving up a part-time job so yeah at the time my wife was working 60 hour weeks and my internship was paid but we also had insurance through her company so it was a very easy decision for us but she was working herself to the bone to make sure it was an easy decision Again, I really reflect on your own personal situation before you make that decision. Caitlin, anything to, any thoughts on that? Yes. yes. As a, even as a student intern, an employer should have you in a role where you are creating value for the company because that is the place where you will be learning and it will be a beneficial relationship for both parties. And if the student is creating value, they should be compensated. So I would expect to be able to find a reasonable paying internship. You know, that's, that's why I take issue with companies if they're a for-profit company and they want you to work for them. Yeah, it could be a learning experience, but you should be adding value to their organization and your value is worth something, so you should be compensated. Absolutely. Um, I would just add that, like John said, you really have to consider what your own situation is, but if at all possible to find a way to make it work to do an internship or somehow get experience relevant to the field you want to go into and give yourself that opportunity to make those connections. And sometimes we've had students who maybe they were working a part-time job 30 hours a week, 25, 30 hours a week. Well, what they were able to do was find an internship that was maybe 12 or 15 hours a week and then keep that other job but let get less hours, right? So they were still maintaining the income they needed but being able to, to make some of those connections and get that experience so sometimes you just kind of have to think outside the box and explore your options and find the right employer who's willing to work with you um I, yeah i would add to that too a lot of internships will just be for the summer and so i'm sure that if you're um, working a part-time job like your employer would work with you um, to maybe take 
a couple months off in the summer. Well, I actually, I know a student who uh, they wanted to do a summer internship, so they did the internship Monday through Friday and then just worked on like Saturdays during the summer for the employer and then once the internship was over went back to working more hours with the employer. So it's a, just a matter of having that those communications, those conversations uh, to explore what the options are that are available to you. Okay, I want to open it up and see what kind of questions you guys might have. Do we have any None questions in the, in the chat? chat room? No, okay. not yet. What would you guys like to know about internships? I have a question. Sure. So I know it's like um, depending on your career, your field, and your major. Hold on a second. I'm not having to use a microphone, so. Oh, God. Okay. Um, hello. Uh, so I know it depends on your major, on your field, and what you're going towards for your career. But like, how competitive can internships be? Like, are we supposed to be like picky on which company we want? Sorry, or do we just like go for it, but and then like, I know, because sometimes when I look for it, like it's not there. It's kind of like during the summer, like you said. So yeah, how competitive can it be? Thank you. That's a good question. So in my industry specifically, it's right now it's a employee market. It was just pretty, there's a lot of roles that need to be filled and not a lot of people to fill them. So I was able to be picky. Thankfully, I really liked my very first one. So again, it really all depends on your situation. Um, I wouldn't put yourself out on a limb while looking like you find one. I wouldn't feel desperate about it. If you start to feel that desperation to need an internship, I would reevaluate what you consider. But that's just I would say it depends on both your interest um, and you, what you're pursuing as a career. Um, I think in my experience, it can be as competitive as you want. Um, a lot of big international companies hire interns, and those programs are probably the success rate of applying to like Ivy League schools. Um, whereas there's a lot of companies who come here uh, looking for interns and you go to the fair and you meet them and you could leave that day with an internship potentially. Um, so I think it depends on what you're interested in. If you want to go um, work at a big international company, then it'll probably be pretty competitive, um, but that doesn't mean you sh shouldn't pursue it. And, um, but yeah, so I think it's kind of up to you and uh, whatever. Caitlin, anything to add? Yes, there are pretty standard times for applications, whether it's a summer internship or a fall internship. So you can make it a fairly competitive process if you submit enough applications. You, you might have two or three offers to choose from. So you can create competition that way. If you were thinking about, is it competitive in that I can negotiate the hourly pay as an intern, that is not usually an option, but you can have multiple offers if you put in the work to get the applications out. And with working remotely this past year, a lot of companies are more open to hiring, say, we're in Indiana, you can apply to companies that are in California or Michigan and work remotely. So you can really create a broad list of opportunities for yourself. Yeah, and, that, and, she, and Caitlin brings up some good points. Uh, timeline uh, for application process. So for summer internships, if you're looking for one for next summer, now is the time when you should be looking and possibly applying. Every company has a little bit different timeline. Uh, General Motors has already closed their summer applications. They're one of the earliest ones I know. So if you are interested in General Motors, you've got to think for summer of 2023 and you better be starting it about eight months in advance, <laughs> nine months in advance. Um, some of the other local companies have theirs open right now and will for the next couple months. And then there are some that won't open theirs until 
late December, early January, but by about the end of February, almost everybody knows who their summer interns are gonna be. So you can't wait till like March or April and then start looking for a summer internship. Um, and, and there are, we are blessed to be here in Fort Wayne where there's a lot of companies, a lot of large employers and they do offer internships year round. Uh, so there are a lot of companies that will offer spring internships and fall internships. And under normal circumstances, I would tell you if you wanted a spring internship, you're way too late right now, but because of the economy and the way it is, and like John said, it's an employee's market right now, I have noticed there are still postings out there for spring internships. So if that's something you're interested, get out there on Handshake, get on Indeed, get on Indiana, oh, it's not Indiana Intern anymore, it's Work and Learn Indiana. So you might wanna write that one down. Work and Learn Indiana is a website that posts internships from around the state of Indiana. And then another one is Ascend Indiana. Uh, they're a nonprofit that works just in Indiana to connect uh, students in Indiana with employers in Indiana for both internships and full-time employment. So check out those two websites, check out Handshake, and then of course check out the regular job search engines, Indeed, or whichever one you like to use. There's lots of places to look. Um, the other thing that Caitlin mentioned was location. So, Again, being in Fort Wayne, we have a lot of opportunities here, but if you dream of working for some national company that's in another location, this past summer we had a student who did an internship at, I think it was Facebook, right? Yeah, Facebook. Mm -hmm. he had a great experience, um, but he sought that out, right? He, he got on their website, he looked at the deadlines, he applied. Um, so I encourage you to do that as well. Um, so one thing that students may not realize is that about half of employers, not everybody, so you need to look into it, but about half of the employers who offer large internship programs will help pay for your housing or your transportation to get there. So again, you have to do your research. Not everybody's going to offer that, but about half of them will. So uh, <coughs> consider that as an option. And a lot more employers, like Caitlin said, are offering remote uh, virtual internship opportunities. So if you are very interested in something like that, there are those opportunities out there as well. Great question. What other questions do we have? Do have something oh, yeah, go ahead. John's got something so to say. So if I can pivot off of that question, a bit of advice that I got way too late in my life is an interview is a two-way street. So you're putting these applications and there may be an interviewing process while you're doing the internship. Remember, they're not just interviewing you for this position. You're interviewing them for the position as well. So find a company that you really admire in your industry. Find out about their culture and things like that. And start thinking of smart questions you'd really like to know from the person that you're talking to. And they'll give you an idea of one of you know, how they respond to things and two, whether or not they'll be a good fit to you. Because it's not just about you being a good fit for them. Good advice. Other questions? There's one in chat. Do you have one in the chat? Oh, let me get that. Thank you. Uh, this one is specifically about Lincoln. They want to know the requirements uh, for applying as an intern at Lincoln. Um, that is a good question. <laughs> I, I'm pretty new to Lincoln, actually, and I don't have an answer for that. Um, I can find out easily, um, so maybe it, I can just um, reach out to them individually. Um, if that's helpful, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can, okay. we, we can we can try to connect you guys. Sure. Get that figured out. Other questions? <clears throat> um, hello. So you um, mentioned that the company should give benefits if you're contributing to that company. Is it common for them to um, you know, pay their interns? And if so, um, is it similar to what you would be gaining if you did a normal part-time job or something like that? Question. 
just going to tell you what I made and how much I worked so you can gauge that for yourself. I was working about 32 hours a week and I was making $15 an hour. So that seems reasonable, especially with, you know, the current situation that we're in. You know, it wasn't industry standard, it was for my position. But I also wasn't expected to do direct industry work either. A lot of the decisions that I was being made were being launched. So I felt for the position and, you know, what I was expected of me, I was being fairly compensated for. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I like students said. There's times where um, you won't get paid for an internship. I worked a summer internship overseas and didn't get paid for it. But um, I won. Didn't really contribute a whole lot to the company. It was more just a learning experience for me. Um, but in my experience, also my paid internships, I couldn't have gone and found a part-time job outside of the career field, making more. So, yeah, it's usually, you're usually not giving up a whole lot to get experience like that. Maybe, and maybe that's worth it to you, um, and so maybe that's what you have to do, but in my experience, it's, I feel like I was barely come, over, probably overcompensated for my internship because <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. And, uh, got paid for it. Yeah. So. I, again, it really depends on the industry too, right? So um, uh, I know some students, uh, some were busy business majors, uh, some were engineering, like that would work at Zimmer Biomet and they were making $30 an hour or something, like more than I was making. It was crazy. Uh, and then um, uh, General Motors, I know also their, their interns make a lot of money. So again, it's going to depend on the industry and the major and the role and all that kind of stuff. But most of the time, I would say you're going to make at least equivalent to what you're probably making in a part-time job. Except for those, if you're working for a nonprofit or something like that, then it may or may not be. I would say, too, that, um, and maybe your situation calls for it, but um, not to get too hung up in the money, to turn down a really good opportunity. Um, so I had two internship offers for audit internships, and one of them paid like $2 an hour more, um, but I really liked the other company better, which is the company I ended up working for. Uh, so if I was just in it for the money, I would have taken the better paying internship and made more money. and not enjoy my job as much. Um, so while it's nice and a good thing, I would advise not to just get hung up in the money um, and miss out on a potentially really good opportunity. Yeah, that's a really good point. Any other questions? we got time for one more question. Any questions in the chat? No more questions in the chat. Okay, then let me ask the panelists this last question. Uh, what general advice about internships would you share with students who are considering an internship? Anything about how to how about to look how about going to look for one or um, choosing one? Anything? Whatever whatever advice you want to share. I would absolutely recommend right now putting yourself out there. Professors, advisors, you know, resources on campus. Just there are so many things that you are paying for as a student here that you should be using. And people don't know you're interested. They can't put you in places. Let them know. Let them know that you're continuing. You're still interested. You know. Let them know how successful it's been after you get your internship. Keep vocal and let people know. Use the resources that you're here that you have at your disposal. Good advice. I would say something that was always really hard for me was just feeling intimidated, approaching people and asking for an internship, uh, just because I felt like I was, I didn't know what I was doing, and I didn't have experience. Um, and I, I think that's fair to feel uncomfortable in that situation, but I, I think that what's the cost of um, sending your resume to someone, or having a conversation and saying, hey, like, do you have any internships you're looking to fill? And so, yeah, the, the cost is, very small of putting yourself out there and if you hear no or no one calls you, then no one calls you. But if uh, 
you connect with someone and they are looking at going into a trip world, then maybe you found probably your first job in your career. So don't let intimidation stop you from pursuing things and putting yourself out there. That's what I would say. Absolutely. You gotta put yourself out there sometimes. Go outside that comfort zone. Caitlin, how about you? to everybody if you're not familiar with them uh, of course being from the career development center we can help you with resumes if you ever need help with your resume we have a email address it's resume review at pfw.edu just send it to us within a few days we'll have a response back to you um, on the career development tab of go pfw we actually have a section that talks about artificial intelligence in the job search process and how to format your resume or make sure you're getting those keywords in your cover letter. So take a look at that. Um, as far as internship specific information, next Wednesday from 4 to 7 p.m. we're hosting the internship initiative. And this is really just an opportunity for you to kind of make sure you're ready to start sending those uh, internship applications out, right? So our staff will be there. It's in the uh, Career Development Center office, Kettler 109. We'll be, um, reviewing resumes, helping you work on an elevator pitch if you We'll be doing a session about just giving some tips on where to look for internships and also offering an opportunity to do a mock interview if you want to practice some interview skills. So um, that's next Wednesday. And then on November 3rd from noon to 3 is our internship fair. That's going to be done virtually on Handshake. Uh, I think we've got, I haven't looked at the list lately, but about 30 employers who are offering internships um, that are available for you to meet with. Uh, you need to sign up and sign up for the sessions with the employers you want to talk to. And I would encourage you to do that soon if you, if you haven't already. All right. Well, I want to thank our panelists for being here today. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time and your, your knowledge and sharing that with us. Um, for those of you who need passport points or endorsed points for your participation today, um, first of all, make sure you checked in at the table back there. I know some of you came in afterwards, so make sure you do that. Uh, and then the QR codes are back there that you can scan for those. And those of you in Zoom, if you hang tight for a minute, Melody's going to try to post those QR codes in the I chat. posted them already. All right, they're already there. So uh, I guess that concludes our program for today. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.